striking back at the weapon they fear most, the Japs send fighter planes to strafe B-29s dispersed on the airfield at Saipan in the Marianas. The devastating power of the mighty superforts has been felt time and again by Tokyo and other important industrial centers in the Japanese homeland. The enemy goes all out in an endeavor to keep the B-29s grounded. Several superforts are set afire or damaged, but 14 out of 15 Jap raiders, including this one, were shot down. Such raids are to be expected, and the still formidable power of our Saipan-based air forces prepares to retaliate with a vengeance. General Emmett O'Donnell, task force leader, and General Haywood Hansel, commanding the 21st Bomber Command, confer on the raid. Major Morgan of Memphis Bell fame piloted O'Donnell's plane. Following the dauntless Dotty are plenty more of the same stripe, off to show Tokyo that the Jap strafing mission to Saipan was all in vain. Newsreel cameramen and official Air Force photographers caught the takeoff. In tight formation, the great fleet of giant bombers roars toward the Jap capital. Alternating with the 20th Bomber Command in Asia, the 21st strikes from Saipan delivering the old one-two punch at the vital industrial centers of Nippon. Rosie O'Donnell's task force roars over Tokyo itself, vulnerable to the long-range striking power of the super force. On the target, and a load of bombs to batter Jap plane factories, steel mills, docks, and other installations blasting key objectives that would otherwise prolong the war and cost many American lives. With Tokyo aflame, the super forts head for home, wheeling into a sky that pictures the setting sun of Japan. The softening up of the Japs in the Philippines means attacks by carrier-based planes on Manila as our troops land less than 150 miles to the south. Hellcats, Helldivers and Avengers swoop down on shipping in Manila Harbor and run up a swell score. One light cruiser sunk, four destroyers sunk and 11 cargo vessels sent to the bottom. Just to top it off, 28 enemy planes were shot down and another 130 strafed in the ground. A giant step on our way back. Limping back to the mothership, a Hellcat comes in with one wheel gone. Watch this amazing landing. Always on the alert, the deck crew goes on the double to his rescue. But this is one safe and happy landing. As we move north in our drive in Japan, the airmen of the fleet spearhead our attack. Incredible a year ago, men can now be picked up by a speeding plane. The dummy is, or was, there. Next, a sheep, selected because of its delicate physique, is placed between the special uprights. The pickup system was evolved for rescues in remote spots. A volunteer paratrooper in special harness makes the trip with no more wrench than a jump from a kitchen stool. The shock is taken up by the nylon rope and special compensating winch in the plane. Gently, the winch hauls him toward the plane. These are Air Force pictures. None the worse, he's ready for another takeoff. 
There have been four men picked up in this fashion during experiments by the Air Technical Command. The pole is designed to steady the climber against the plane slipstream. Intensive training of pilots is necessary for the operation. Fantastic as Buck Rogers, here's another aviation miracle come true. Blanketing the continent as far south as Tennessee, snow hits a near record in Canada, almost paralyzing many big cities, including Montreal. Whipped by heavy winds, the snow fell for hour upon hour in this Quebec metropolis. Throughout the Dominion, the blizzard took its toll. Fifty lives were lost, and hardest hit was the area around Toronto, where 18 died from the storm. The city was virtually isolated, but he still kept up his rounds. With 22 inches on the ground, stores were closed and pedestrians set out at their own risk. Most offices were closed, and shovelers had no need for the reminder as they fought to keep a few main streets open to traffic. Frozen switches had to be thawed to keep them rolling. The worst snowstorm of this century took a heavy toll. A hard-fought title game is in the making at the Polo Grounds as Laws of the Green Bay Packers tears through the New York Giants line for a 17-yard gain. Frisch, the Packers' brilliant ground gainer, slashes through right tackle for 23 yards more, putting the ball on the Giants' one-yard strike. Again, it's Frisch over for the Packers' first tally. Piling it on during the first period, the Packers' cop slings a fast one to Hudson, who is downed after a 23-yard game. Packers set up their second scoring play, beating the Giants for the title by a score of 14 to 7.